look at the fantasy projections at each position according to NHL.com. Those are the stars of the stars. And we are back here for the 2023 betting and fantasy preview show. Anna and Pete with me. And let's get into roster construction. Maybe we can call this fantasy foundation. All right. So when you are getting ready for a draft, what are some of the things that you are telling people out there to pay attention to? Well, other than best player available, I like to try to compliment, like you say, if you took a really young player early on with enormous upside like Jason Robertson or Miko Ranton and like try to compliment it the second round with a veteran, maybe like Crosby or Ovechkin. You know, try to not stack in your first two picks from the same team, two players from the same team or two players from the same position. That's why we say, Anna, diversify your first two picks. So diversify, yes. Let me ask you a question, Anna. Would you be opposed to having the same goalie and the same, you know, top offensive player on a team? Not opposed to it, but I wouldn't do that too early on, especially this season. We're so blessed in fantasy hockey, guys. We have so many options. The league is deeper than it ever has been before. But adding on to what Pete said, I have this thing that I always say, and that's beware of the center trap, okay? This league is filled with elite star studded centers and you're gonna get tempted to take one of these guys, but you gotta pick up a great defenseman early on. You gotta, good, you gotta get a goalie in either round two or round three to make sure that you have this full complete roster. And if, if you just get attracted by all of these centers and these big names, you're gonna be deep in your draft and be like, oh no, I got some empty spots I have to fill. What about knowing your format? We showed it there on the graphic. How important is it for you to go into, I know this sounds simple, but I think people just go, oh, I'll just draft Connor McDavid. I know he's really good at hockey, but all right, listen, like you go into your draft. How important is it to know your format, the stats that you need? Oh, definitely. It's integral. I think that you look at, if you're in a hits league, like you gravitate towards guys like Brady Kachuk early on. Like I would reach for Brady Kachuk in the top, 510 in a standard league that counts hits. It's not even that bold to say anymore, especially with the Senators on the rise. There are guys deeper down the line, Tom Wilson, Evander Kane, right? Uh, Boone Jenner, late rounds. Like there's so many guys that cover the hits category that can really uh, give you that foundation and that floor where even if a guy doesn't reach his ceiling offensively, he's still going to get you like shot Ovechkin, shots on goal and hits every single year. Same thing from Brady Kachuk. So you got to sprinkle that into your lineup. And same thing with faceoffs. Like if you have a wing like Claude Giroux or Joe Pavelski that takes a ton of faceoffs and faceoffs count in your league, you got to be on that. Otherwise, you're going to be left scrambling when everybody else is loading up on that category. So Pete, I've known you for a while, Anna. First time I'm getting a chance to work with you. And what I've noticed is you're both really nice you are you're very smart you. but you're really nice <laughs> let's can we stop that enough we're gonna have you guys battle things out a little bit and let's start with a little winger debate uh which kachuk would you want well i just teed up right brady kachuk <laughs> i feel like brady kachuk with all due respect to Connor mcdavid like brady kachuk has nearly unmatched category coverage with the shots on goal he was a point per game player last year could he take it even a step further in the years to come playing on a line with Tim Stutzla. And remember, Vladimir Tarasenko, Anna, signed there this offseason. Uh, Short-term deal, but big upside for that line trio. I'm gravitating towards him. Absolutely. You know, I love the Kachucks, but in this particular debate, I got to go with the older one. I got to side with Matthew right Get now because had a 100-point season, right? We're like, oh, Matthew Kachuk is peaking. He's doing so great. What does he do? Follow that up with another 100-point season. So now all of a sudden, this guy's a consistent 100-point player. He took his team to the Stanley Cup final and had a performance of a lifetime during the postseason last year. You know, I can't argue against what we're seeing on the screen right now, guys. Matthew Kachuk is my Kachuk for this season. All right, so there are the numbers. Games are pretty close to even. Matthew with the goals edge, the assists edge, the points edge, and point number one goes to Anna. All right, that's it. If we're doing a debate, we're giving Anna the first point. Let's go to the centers now. You mentioned Stutzla uh, and Connor Bedard, so you go first. So this is where I come back to bite Pete because he just talked so much <laughs> hype about Brady Kachuk, so much hype about Vladimir Tarasenko joining the Senators. So I'm going to take that exposure in Tim Stutzla, who I think is one of the, if not the most underrated player in the NHL right now. 90-point player. This kid's a stud, and now he's on a much improved Senators team. Is going to be playing with Kachuk. Is going to be playing with Tarasenko. Going to get the exposure from both of those players, and that's why he's my center to watch. So thanks, Pete, for the assistance. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, I guess my only concern with him is if, if it ends up being a healthy Josh Norris, who I think has the ceiling of scoring like 40 plus goals. If he ends up coming back from injury and being the number one center, you could be looking at maybe uh, not as high of a ceiling as we might envision for Stutzla in the short term. But I look at with Connor Bedard, if you are ha if you're facing this debate, say from the 30 to 40 range, like the uh, third round, fourth round in your fantasy draft. Like, Connor Bedard is the generational talent. Connor Bedard's ceiling, we know, is 125 plus points. And how many other guys around the league could you say that about? Maybe Jack Hughes. We've seen, obviously, McDavid do it before. Kucherov do it before. Dry Saddle's up there. But, like, in keeper leagues, we went ahead, Anna, and you could back me on this. Connor Bedard is ranked ahead of Jack Hughes, ahead of Kale McCarr, among 25 and under players. Of course, McDavid is now 26. He's the universal number one in all formats, but if you're in a keeper or dynasty league and you have the number one pick this year, this is your time to draft Connor Bedard, so I'd take him almost en over anybody in the entire league. The control room is saying Pete on that one. Sorry, Anna. So it's 1-1. <laughs> one, one. We're going to go to defense now. We heard the guys talk about Miro Haskinen. Uh, Quinn Hughes is obviously amazing, so from a fantasy standpoint, who do you want? Ah, this is tough. I mean, Hughes is a beast in the assist department, power play points, but uh, I'm going with Haskinen. I think we saw it in the playoffs when he had that little injury scare. Like, this team and its Stanley Cup aspirations and regular season chances of being one of the best teams in the league and winning the Central Division hinges on a healthy Miro Haskinen. We've seen it a couple of playoffs ago when he was a point-per-game player as a defenseman. He rediscovered that where he was tied for fifth in points this past regular season and was solid for them in the playoffs as well. So I'll go with Haskinen just because of how much he means to that team, which is not going to be just a playoff team like Vancouver potentially, like their Stanley Cup or bust. Anna, tell him why he's wrong. You're wrong because you know what what the issue is there's a lot of hype around Jack Hughes I just hyped him up earlier in this show and I feel like Quinn Hughes is now the long lost forgotten <laughs> Hughes brother the guy just became the captain of the Vancouver Canucks and had, was tied for the second most points among defensemen last year in the NHL behind Eric Carlson we were all excited about Eric Carlson's breakout season forgetting that Quinn Hughes was right behind him in those standings the guy's so talented I like the Canucks I think they have some good pieces and I think he's a key part of this team which is why they gave him to see this year, Pete. He has that extra motivation in his first year as the captain of this Vancouver squad. <laughs> the third best ceiling among Hughes brothers is still pretty darn good, right? <sighs> I don't, I feel like that's a push. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go push there. All right, let's go to the goalie, Samsonov and uh, Gustafsson. Who you got, Anna? Listen, Linus Olmark, great year. Got to give him all the credit for winning the Vesna. Right behind him in save percentage was Philip Gustafson. I feel like people forget about him quite a little bit. 931 save percentage last year. The kid's a stud. Wow. I really like watching him. He has a really high ceiling. The Minnesota Wild with a healthy Kaprizov, they're a pretty talented team. They got young players like Matt Boldy, really trying to figure out where they stand in this league. But what Gustafson did last year proved to me that he can hold his own. He's going to get a decent amount of starts. I'm really excited about him, and I think his numbers last year proved it. I'm going with Samsonov because I think that his ceiling is higher than it's ever been before. He played on some good Capitals teams. He played on a great regular season team last year in the Maple Leafs. But with the offseason additions that this team made, Tyler Bertuzzi, Max Domi, a full season of rookie Matty Nyes, and also John Klingberg, they kind of lucked into getting John Klingberg, who could maybe run their power play one on some nights. I mean, this guy, his career high was last year, 27 wins. He could have 40 wins this year. Year. That's what the ceiling wow. is. He could be among the league leaders. I don't know that he's going to win the Vezina, but sky high ceiling for one of the best regular seasons upcoming. Regular season. I, think I got Pete upcoming. on this one. I'm sorry, Ooh. Anna. All right, but a chance for you to tie. We're going to throw. The, you know what? It's the 20 point value pick here. So whoever gets this correct and wins this debate wins <laughs> the debate. So uh, Anna, you'll go first. Who's someone a value play that you're looking a little bit later in the draft? You know, I'm singing the praises for the Vancouver Canucks right now, guys. <laughs> I'm expecting a little gift basket from Vancouver when I go home because <laughs> I'm taking a look at Andre Kuzmenko. He really impressed me last year. I mean, he had 39 goals, 74 points in 81 games. Those are great numbers to begin with. Getting more used to this Vancouver squad this year, his ceiling is so, so high. You know he can score the goals. His net front presence is great. He's always in the right place at the right time to tip those pucks in and you love to see that because he's going to really benefit off of all those players that he's playing with so he's my value pick this year. 
Those are your goal leaders. Look at Kuzmenko with the 17 goals from February 15th to the end of the season. So that's a good case. What do you got, Pete? A couple rounds later than Kuzmenko, though, you could get potentially the number one center for the Boston Bruins. And, hey, the Bruins, right, they lost a lot. But uh, Pavel Zaka learned a lot last year from uh, spending time with David Krejci and Patrice Bergeron before those guys retired this year. If he's the number one center, he's already got proven chemistry with David Pasternak. You could get him outside the top 150 overall in most leagues this year. And if the Bruins don't make a trade before opening night, like, this is the guy that's going to take an enormous jump from even last year when he set career highs pretty much across the board. Yeah, there are the numbers for Zaka right there. 21 goals, 36 assists, 57 points. So it was a heck of a debate, guys, really. And hold on. Yep. Oh, Rupper says you want, Anna. You know what? I'll take it. Rupper's my favorite person on this panel now. Wow. All right. There you go.